And there are builders much tinier than we are that don't think the way we do and don't act the way we do that create astonishing things all over the world. Some things you're aware of, like for example, the wasp nest behind you. How in the heck did he make that? It's so awesome. You're going to learn about it today if you don't know already. But it's just amazing how these creatures, from the tiniest little things that can be just about a grain of sand, all the way up to much larger animals, um, create um, architecture that is stunningly beautiful and comical and just uh, wonderful. Honeybees, these are incredible architects. So they secrete the wax that they use to make honeycomb. They secrete it from eight glands in their, their abdomens. And so the wax comes out and it flakes off. And then they pick up the flakes and they make these, who thought of this? These perfect hexagons. And these little tubes are where they lay, um, lay eggs. And then some of them are they're storing honey and, uh, and pollen. And they are one of the, the great insect architects, not to mention they have a very complex social system where through dancing they actually tell each other where they can find um, uh, pollen and find, uh, find their food. Two to three million termites live in one of these towers. They're built of, of just dirt, mud, and saliva. And again, there's a very complex um, society that lives within them, so all of these different types of the termites within this um, mound have specific jobs, whether you're the guy with the big head that, that is the supervisor, whether you're the guy that is the one that is actually making the structure, or whether you're the guy that is um, protecting the eggs or um, maintaining the, uh, the places where the eggs are laid, They're all, they all have very specific social um, behaviors. If you didn't get along, you could never build something like this. A single structure can be 20 feet high with two to three million individuals living in it. And this is amazing too, how they think about this. There's a chimney in the center of this thing that actually helps regulate the temperature. Because you're out in Australia's desert, it's hot as heck out there. It's always about 86 degrees inside this uh, termite mound. <laughs> that thing has to be 30 feet tall. But this one is my, this is unbelievable. Who built it better? Did Gaudi? or did the termites. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> That's it. These um, weaver birds are really incredible architects. Birds are, birds are the greatest treehouse builders of all architects. And that could be a little bit cumbersome for the electrical company, you'd think. <laughs> and again, massive nests of the sociable weaver in, in South Africa. Can you, and can you imagine also the weight of this, how it could take a tree down, are the bower birds. It's so the gray bowerbird. This guy's from Australia, and he makes this arbor to attract the ladies. But she doesn't care. She wants a dowry. I mean, she wants something really cool. So he collects shells, all sorts of shells and things, puts them inside the arbor, all around the outside of the arbor, and says, here I am. This is what I have to offer you. And she comes down and she says, sold. I'll take it. And then they mate. And then she leaves them and she builds some creepy little nest up in a tree, raises, uh, lays the eggs, raises the young all on her own, and his job is done. Bowerbird is really, I think, the bowerbird to beat all, the vogel cup bowerbird, um, because he uses really colorful stuff. The gray bowerbird uses just kind of gray seashells and things like that. But this guy is over the top. When, when I showed Jamie Fisher these pictures, he said, I don't, I don't have a house that looks that nice or is that decorative. So he's collecting. Um, he could be collecting plastic straws, probably. But he's collecting fruits and nuts. And is that a piece of garbage up in there? Uh, oh, that's like a leaf. And these are all plastic straws, guys. Isn't that crazy? Uh, all the junk that we leave behind that these animals are using to attract the the, uh, the females. But bowerbirds, again. It's no matter what type of bowerbird it is, they're doing the same thing. They're building this beautiful arbor. They're uh, making a, a dancing area in front of it. They're loading it with treasures. And then the female just goes off after mating and takes care of the, the brood. A handful of species realized that there was just too much competition in vernal pools. Um, have we thought about frogs as being architects? I'm, I'm taking my show off the road. I'm going to go up into trees and I'm going to make these crazy foam nests. So the foam um, frogs do it this way. He makes the foam, obviously. She's laying the eggs and then they create these ground nests of foam. This guy from Trinidad and Tobago. This cute thing who makes his in the trees. 
same mating process, but can you imagine? Frogs in trees, who'd have thunk it?